Hello and welcome to another Boredom Buster activity. My name is Megan. I live here on Treaty 6 territory, the homeland of the Métis, and uh, I work at the Saskatoon Public Library. Today's video is actually part of part two. There's another video about this same subject that Dawn made, and it's about, today we're talking about geocaching. So she made a video about how to find geocaches, and I'm going to go over some of the basics for making your own. Um, but I want to point out that the, the key to geocaching is being sneaky. So we're kind of breaking the rules by showing you this, but it's all on the website, so you can go and read it for yourself too. So the first thing you should know is that they recommend you find 20 caches before you make your own. And then once you decide to make your own, you can read the guidelines and register it with headquarters, geocaching headquarters, where all of the geocaching experts work. All right. Now, choosing your location. You should think about which location you want to put your geocache in before you make it. Why do you want people to go to that location? Is there something special there? Is it special to you? When you put it up on the website, you'll want to describe it a little bit. And make sure that it's a spot that you can legally visit, so it has to be accessible. Um, it can't be on private property, and it has to be available. So somewhere where people can reach it, not buried underground, that sort of thing. Okay, and now we have to decide what our geocache looks like. So you'll have to find a container, something that's watertight. That's really important because these will be outside all the time. So plastic container that has a nice tight seal. These are little Kinder Surprise ones. This might get a little bit wet inside. Might have to put it inside of something else. Um, salad dressing cups. This one I put a little face on. That one's got a nice seal. Water bottles, if you have a fancy water bottle. You can seal that up. Ooh, this one is a tiny, tiny Tic Tac container I saved. This would make a really good micro geocache, which are the smallest size of geocache. And what's tricky about making them is that every geocache has to have a log book in it. So a piece of paper that is big enough for you to write your name on and when you found it. So this is a larger size, it's easier to write on, but it won't fit easily into a tiny micro. So that's really a challenge. This one is most often the size you'll see. A lot of geocachers like Tupperware because it has a nice tight seal, especially these clippy ones. And with a bigger size, you can also include a pencil or a pen, like a golf pencil, um, so that if the person looking for it doesn't have their own with them, they can still sign the logbook. And you can also include some treasures. Now, when you go out geocaching, you might want to put together a little bag of supplies. So have a pen with you that you can write on the log and some treasures in case you can take a treasure and leave a treasure. So I've got some in my bag. I've got a monkey that would fit in here, a, an eraser, a car. I have three Elsas. So if there were treasures inside the geocache, I could take one and I could leave one. In Dawn's video, she left a tiny SPL pin, which is the perfect size for a treasure. And remember that this is a sneaky activity. So you want to make sure it's hidden and out of sight and it doesn't look too obvious or like garbage because somebody might clean it up. Once you hide your geocache, you're responsible for it. So you have to go back and check that it's still there, it's still clean and airtight, and uh, refill it if the logbook goes missing. All right, so those are the basics of geocaching. You can definitely go out now 
and uh, find 20 of your own and then maybe try making one. All right, have fun.